Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Strong Draws. My name is Brett Strong, and today I'm going to be drawing Ray Shagul. Um, you're going to see me uh, start here with a couple of uh, initial rough ideas, they don't work out. Um, when I started doing this, I was going to do uh, Rage and Talia, but I ended up spending too much time on him and <coughs> excuse me, and just got kind of later in the evening than I wanted it to be spent. So I ended up not actually finishing Talia, but ended up doing Rage. So here I'm just kind of roughing it in, and like I said in my last video, I think this is going to be the collaboration. Uh, with my friend Nick, uh, he's gonna. I gotta get in touch with him, see if he's still got time to do this right now. But uh, I'm gonna have him ink this, and then uh, I will do the colors over top of it for the next video. So, um, like I said, you see me roughing in, kind of roughly the idea I want of where the figures are gonna be, the size, and everything, and their poses to a certain extent. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I might be getting a cold here or something, but, um, beyond that, I, I mean, it's all kind of self-explanatory, um, they're going to be a little bit tighter pencils, um, in Photoshop than I normally do if I were inking myself, they're not going to be, you know, too extremely clean or tight, um, Nick is a very good artist in his, you know, his own right, which sounds weird, he's, he's a very, very good artist, so, I left some room open for his interpretation and, you know, we've worked together a lot over the past, oh, 10 years, 12 years now, since I've known him, and so I know what he, what he's more than capable of handling and the information he needs, so, um, anyhow, um, kind of what I want to talk about today, it was something I was thinking about, <clears throat> uh, I think it was yesterday, the day before, was, um, you know, for I've been wanting to make comic books since I was about, oh, I'd say 13, 14 years old. <clears throat> and that, and I'm, if, it, if it's any consequence, I'm 30 now. So for the past 15 or more years, it's kind of all, what I've wanted to do. And I started in high school, I made my first comic book. I created my own character and, it, it, you know, it's a vampire story and something a character I still mess with from time to time and kind of have plans to do with uh, more in the future. But, I mean, I remember doing that. I did like six pages, seven pages in a weekend. It was, it wasn't very good, obviously, but it was you know, simple six panel grids and just all pencil and all hand done. It, again, not not great, but it was my first um, taste of what it was like to do comic books. And I remember about the time I really got into it was around the time the Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man, um, Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire movies came out and, and uh, the Daredevil movies came out or the, first, the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie came out. And <clears throat> I was always drawing those characters, always drawing superheroes. Um, my first exposure to superheroes was um, the Chris Reeve Supermans and the Tim Burton, Michael Keaton Batman. And I don't know when I first became aware that they were comic book characters, so to speak, or what comic books were. But there was always something, you know, just something I've always been interested in and something I always wanted to do. Um, was always drawing, always loved to drawing. And so, I mean, even from the time I was probably old enough to color to the time now, and, you know, I've always loved to draw. And what, what I got to thinking about the other day was nobody, I don't think anybody really understands 
why I want to make comic books. I, I don't think anybody looks past the one-dimensional he likes to draw or he likes superheroes, which are both true, but I, I guess being a comic artist, and I'm sure most of you who are watching this are artist or comic artist or comic fans to some extent, but I guess the more I've done it and the older I've got and the reason I keep doing it, 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 it to me, it doesn't seem like enough. I mean, I guess to people who don't really read comics or know comics, liking superheroes plus loving to draw means comic book artist, which... I guess I can see where they're coming from, but it's it, the the thing is, it's it's more than that, at least to me. Uh, I don't get me wrong. I like all kinds of comics. Don't get I know I like the superhero stuff, the the flights and tights, punchy, smashy, superpower stuff. But there's you know I also like one of my favorite. Books. I got the I got a collection of Will Eisner's stuff and with his contract with God and I think Life Force is in there. Um, I got a big collection, you know, and it's it's not superhero stuff. It's about him growing up in the '40s in New York and you know, for those of you who have read it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't read it, I highly suggest it. You can learn a lot from not only his style but his storytelling. I mean, Will Eisner's probably the one of the greatest sequential artists we'd ever we've ever had. Some might argue Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby was great and reinvented the superhero genre as far as comic books go, but I think sequential storytelling, nobody is better than Will Eisner, so but I guess kinda of my point is is that the reason I chose to do comics is, you know, drawing plus superheroes does not equal comics. Loving to draw I could have, you know, I'm sure every comic book artist out there, anybody who has ever drawn has always heard, well, you could go do tattoos, or you could go do spot illustrations, or you could go, you know, for magazines, or whatever. I mean, there's other things to do with drawing besides comics. So, for me, no one, I guess... It just kind of occurred to me that nobody ever really asked why comics. They just assumed superheroes plus drawing comics. And, I don't know, I guess it, it, I don't know, the only people that I've never had this conversation, that I wouldn't be surprised I haven't had this conversation with, are my friends who kind of make comics or, or stuff like that. Stuff like, people like Nick and whatnot. But... It's hard to make people understand, and I think this is part of the problem with the perception of comic books. Um, since they're still mainly seen as a child's medium, or medium created for children. Which, even in that respect, I mean, I guess I don't see why that's such a disrespectful, I guess I don't see that as a disrespectful thing or a thing for people to use against us because I mean look at Pixar, look at Disney, they've made billions of dollars on making entertainment for children. It's not a bad thing and that shouldn't be looked down upon even if that's people's perception of it. But the thing about comics that I don't think the layman or the civilian, whatever you want to call them, somebody who's not indoctrinated into this stuff a little bit understands is it's it's not the drawing part that I like. I mean it's it's part of it, but it's the storytelling. Many more people whenever they ask me or if it ever comes up, I, I mean I try to put it out there as much as possible to anybody I meet because you never know who you might come across or who you might get to uh know through that you know, just Putting yourself out there saying, hey, I make comics, I like to draw, I draw these superheroes, look what I did, you know, you never know who you're going to run into. But, whenever I, like I said, so I bring it up in conversation with whoever I meet, if it's somebody I don't know. And the thing is, is I always, 
whenever I'm explaining it to them, I say, well, I draw comics, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a storyteller. I always make sure to put that in there, is I'm a storyteller. I like, because people, if you tell somebody you're a sequential artist, I don't really think they're going to get what you're saying, because that term isn't something that's really put out there as much as I think it should be. Um, not necessarily for... Uh, respectability, but more for understanding. When we draw comics, we're not drawing Batman or Superman, or even, you know, if you go, if you work for those, you know, want to work for Marvel or DC or Spider-Man or Daredevil, you're not, you're not drawing necessarily just those characters, you're drawing that character's story. And that's the thing that I try to make people understand is the reason I do this is not to sit and draw pictures or characters. I sit and draw to tell a story. It's a visual storytelling medium and it's one unlike any other that we have in any culture, in my, in my opinion. We have movies now, we have video games. We have the animated movies. We have all this stuff. We have, you know, normal books, you know, prose books. But with comics, you get to tell a very unique story in a way that you can't do it in any other medium. You can't, I mean, we're getting, they're getting a little bit closer, I think, with movies, like, you know, with the Avengers and stuff. Where, you know, you can make it feel like a comic book, but there's reasons why the uh, they don't adapt the popular stories into movies. Now, they're doing that a little bit, I guess, now with Civil War. They even kind of did it with Ultron, but look, Ultron wasn't even... It, it was the character from the book, but he didn't come about the way he did in the book. And, you know, they're doing Civil War, which I'm fairly certain is going to be pretty, you know, different from from the actual story from the comics. And, you know, again, they're getting closer, and they're doing stuff like, you know, the animated stuff, like I said, with uh, Dark Knight Returns, but it just doesn't translate because it can't translate directly from the comics medium to a filmed medium. You ask any filmmaker, any director, that's exactly what they'll tell you. Just because it works on the page it doesn't mean it's going to work on the screen. And that's what I feel special about comics is you get to tell a unique story in a way that you couldn't do it in any other medium. And like I said, for, for people who think it's just fun to draw the superheroes, which it is, it's it's telling that story. So I guess kind of the thing is is if you're a comic book artist and you're out there and people ask you what you do, if you're and you don't you know they just figured drawing plus superheroes. Explain to them it's a storytelling medium, and that's the important thing that people need to understand is it's not whether it's for kids or for adults. It's a it's a way to express yourself in with no other way that you can do it. You can't do it in film, you can't do it in animation, it, at least not the way you can in comics. You get to know these characters so much more intimately because of stuff like an internal monologue, stuff you can't really pull off in films or any other animated medium or filmed media. So, oh, just thought I'd share that with you. I was kind of thinking about that the other day. Let me know what you guys think. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Um, also, if you guys are working on any of your projects, let me know down in the comments below. So I'm almost about ready to wrap up here. The uh, finished product will pop up, up, up at the end here. Uh, you can check me out on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr. Links in the description. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye.